So the next story uh, we got here, Will, is uh, uh, about Russia Gate, and you know we we talk about this all the time because it's so important. Uh, Gain to the roots of Russia Gate, and uh, you know the the deep state and FBI intelligence community, and what was going on in the late later days of the Obama administration. Um, and, and so Donald Trump has at least tweeted out that he has fully authorized the total declassification of any and all documents pertaining to the single greatest political crime in American history, the Russia <laughs> hoax. And so, I mean, Will, he's the commander in chief and he said fully authorized any and all. So that, that sounds to me like we are just going to get a trove of documents uh, uh, about, you, you know, everything going on in the FBI and CIA and, Right. I mean, that that was the order of the president. So it's going to happen. Is that the story here? Yeah, I mean, you'd think and you'd hope, but uh, that's not it does not appear to be the case. Like this, this story is kind of like equal parts amusing and frustrating and irritating because uh, earlier this month, as you're saying, Trump's got this tweet where he says he's authorized. Like if, uh, People watching the, v- the video can see the tweet on screen right now. But yeah, authorizing declassification for all documents related to the whole Trump Russia thing. So all the stuff the FBI and DOJ and CIA were doing uh, after the two, two, uh, 2016 election. Um, and also, apparently, he says the, the Hillary Clinton private email server scandal, which is sort of an older thing that predates Russiagate. But he sa- not only did he say he was going to declassify this stuff, but with no redactions whatsoever. So it would all just come out. They would just do this big dump. So that sounds like a huge deal. Like that would be a huge deal had they actually done it. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, earlier this month, a federal judge came out and poured cold water pretty much all over this. Because uh, obviously we have not gotten the, all these unredacted documents coming out. So we had a few uh, media outlets actually sue the government to try to get them to release these, this stuff under the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, in particular, I think they, these media outlets were looking for the unredacted Mueller report, of uh, the special counsel probe. Uh, but in these lawsuits, I think they're just like uh, trying to get Trump. They're trying to compel the Trump administration to do what he said in this tweet and to release the whole trove of unredacted stuff. And it's pretty ironic because the news outlets we're talking about here are CNN and BuzzFeed. They're the ones behind these FOIA lawsuits. So now we have these like very diehard enemies of Trump. They're the ones pushing now for the release of all the Russiagate docs, something that Trump himself has been saying that he wants to do for like years now, uh, but it hasn't happened. But now we have CNN and BuzzFeed uh, trying to do his work for him, I guess, which, you know, I just find that part amusing. Um, I mean, you might think that you, you would think they'd be concerned that these documents would like debunk like 80 percent of their own reporting on this all this Trump Russia crap, because uh, I think they are calling not just for the, the special counsel report. They want all of it. They're trying to de- uh, compel Trump to to go through with what he said. Um, but I don't know. I guess they're confident they could spin that stuff away or ignore it or, you know, give it the Hunter Biden treatment which is just incredible how they're able to do that. They can just completely brush a story under the rug, even though we all know that story is out there. Like, I don't know, they can just not talk about it. Um, but anyway, to swing back to this ruling uh, on, in one of these FOIA suits, uh, this federal judge, Reggie Walton, said that uh, the Trump tweet doesn't qualify as like an official order to declassify anything. So it doesn't commit him to doing anything. Um, but not for the reason that you might think. Like, I was under the impression that the president can't actually issue official orders like through tweets. I didn't think that was a thing, but that is not the argument the judge is making. Um, Because Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, uh, went to the court and he argued that this tweet that the president sent out is not itself a new order. He says he's actually just referring to a previous directive that he gave last year to the intelligence agencies where he told them to cooperate with the attorney general, Bill Barr, as he reviews Russiagate documents, like for their eventual release. Um, However, that explanation makes absolutely no sense because clearly Trump is not talking about that. He's talking about something else. Where he's talking, he says no redactions. Like that directive that he gave to uh, the intelligence agencies last year had nothing to do with no redactions. So clearly he's not referring to that. Um, but nonetheless, that is the reason the judge cited, like, as, as why he ruled the way he did. He's just taking Meadows' argument on its face that this tweet is not a new order, but it's merely a reference to a previous one. And therefore he can't, you know, it doesn't commit Trump to doing anything. Um, but he did not, the judge, what he did not do is dismiss the idea that Trump could have given an official order over Twitter, which apparently he can. Um, I don't know all the legal technicalities there, but that was not that did not. That, oh, you know, what a silly idea that he could give an order over Twitter. Like, no, that is, I think, a thing. Um, but I just find this entire thing like extremely frustrating, frustrating, because like I also would like to see all of this material published in full with zero redactions. And Trump keeps saying that he wants to over and over again, yet nothing happens. He just like we just see him tweeting about it. He's the guy in the chair. And yet, like with so many issues, he's just sit, all he can do is complain about it on Twitter. 
Whereas, like, if he really wanted that to happen, he could, you know, I think start threatening people, threatening to fire people if they don't make it happen, and he could do it, but he hasn't. And so now we're in a position where we're relying on BuzzFeed and CNN, of all people, to get them to release this material through these FOIA suits. It's just kind of a ridiculous situation. We're like, you know, again, like, like right now, we're like four days away from the election, and there's uh, there's nowhere near the time that they would need to pour over all this declassified stuff, if they even if they released it right now, right this second. So I don't know. Trump, I think, just totally blew this with these documents. And uh, if he doesn't get in there again, if he doesn't lo- doesn't win this election, like it's very it's very likely we will never see these documents published, especially with no redactions. I don't know how how likely it is, even if Trump wins a second term. But if Biden gets in there, then it's like for sure we're not seeing this stuff. Yeah. You, you know, maybe I'm going to give this person too much credit. But with BuzzFeed, I assume that Jason Leopold is involved in. He has uh, been somebody who is uh drinking the russia gate kool-aid very very deeply but at the same time he was somebody who published like hillary clinton's emails in the run-up to 2016 uh when right. he was able to get some of those through foia and so uh, is the foia ninja right so. right i think at one time they the government like called him a foia terrorist in a document or something and he was pretty <laughs> proud of that so um that is, i would be too uh yeah yeah so it, you know i guess it's possible that like if documents do come out uh hopefully leopold would just you know uh be honest and publish them no matter what they show and uh, i guess uh even if it doesn't come out before the election will as long as it would come out by january maybe this is uh as weird as it would sound it's going to end up being cnn and buzzfeed that liberate the documents that uh, give the American people a true understanding of Russiagate. Uh, that would just that would be the you know icing on the cake of the Russiagate irony here. Uh, but Real plot twist, yeah. Should we move on to talk about Glenn Greenwald? Yeah, that's all I got. 